All right, I'm gonna tear down this caliper, which is off of a 1992 Toyota pickup four-wheel drive. I've got one already torn down off to the side, but we're gonna tear it down and rebuild it and give it a coat of paint. Well, I don't think the electric's quite got that in it. All right, let's see if the Ugga Dugga has enough to... Now we've got those bolts out, but we'll likely have to throw them back in because uh, we'll have to use compressed air to force the pistons out of the calipers so we can get the seals off and everything. Um, and the, there's a seal between the two calipers right here and right there that it doesn't work if the bolts aren't in. But we're just trying to see if we can get it apart right now. So the next thing is try to get those two pins out. One half. Probably reuse those pads, they're looking pretty good. <laughs> Alright, so the pins are out. There's a seal right there. And there's another one on the other side right there. And when those two halves of the caliper sandwich together, like so. That's what allows the brake fluid to travel from this side to this side, so that it's a double acting caliper, so it acts from both sides of the caliper. So we need to throw those bolts back in, not super tight. Use some compressed air to pop those, pop those apart. To get these pistons to pop out of the caliper, got the two old brake discs just sitting in here, roughly in the middle. And uh, we're gonna put some compressed air in the, uh, uh, the inlet and that will pop them out now this caliper wasn't seized so it shouldn't be too bad but if your caliper if a piston on your caliper is stuck it can take quite a bit of air pressure to get it to move so that's why you want something in here because you build up enough pressure and it'll shoot the piston out of the caliper with a fair bit of force so you get something to keep it from flying all the way out like so That one came out too far. <clears throat> I'm gonna need a clamp. Trying to go back in sideways. There we go. See if we can get this other side to move. break out the plumbing pliers. Managed to get the two in this side moving off camera, but uh, these two are still pretty stuck, so we're gonna have to try something different for those, but we'll get these out first. We'll get the cooperative ones out first. There's all brake fluid that's been in there. These came off a truck that's been sitting a while, so goal is to try to rebuild them, but I mean, we'll see. We'll see how well this goes. Unhook that seal. These seals didn't keep everything out. See why that might be a little stuck. It's also coming out a bit sideways. Careful with the pliers not to get on the actual parts of the caliper or on the parts of the piston that are sealing to the seal that's in there. You damage those and it's 
game over. Generally, you can use this lip here with pliers as long as you don't tear it to pieces because that's back side of that is what the seal seals to. So, the odor dust uh, seal, that is. So, there's another one. Now we got the two stubborn ones to try. Start getting those seals off. Oh, yeah. She's just a little crusty in there. Now, those haven't moved far enough for me to get pliers on very well. Probably only get to. Oh, yeah. I won't even turn. Yeah, okay, so penetrating fluid. Lately I've been a big fan of this uh, WD-40 rust release stuff. The specialist stuff. Their uh, bike chain lube and cleaner too seems to be really nice. All their, all their non-WD-40 products that I've used have turned out pretty good. So I'm going to let that sit a while. All right, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's see if that made any difference. There's still quite a bit of fluid sitting up on top. <coughs> nope. Well, we'll let them sit a little longer and then resort to getting some heat. Try that. Try from the back side to get some. Uh, try to get those calipers uh, lubricated from the back side and see if that makes any difference. Let that soak in the back for about 15 minutes. Let's we'll see if we can maybe get some movement out of these. No good angle. <clears throat> I don't want to destroy that lip because it's the only surface that the seal has. <clears throat> okay, let's see if we can do a little pry. Just enough for him to get in. Okay. If that's just bending. That's not really doing anything either. Okay, heat it is. Now this will destroy the rubber seals that are in here, but I have more of those in the rebuild kit, so let's see what we can make happen. Really careful not to bend that edge. It really would not take much. Okay, more heat. Or I saw that move. <laughs> Absolutely will not budge. <clears throat> cool that down and try coming at it with air again. I don't think it's going to work though. All right, so we're back to the air on this one. This side of the caliper is the side that's stuck. These two have been soaking in uh, penetrant for a while, so we're gonna pressurize it again with air. 
I must have that backwards. No way did those just pop out. Do I have that backwards? I must. Clamp stuck. Good. I did have that backwards. Uh, so these are the ones that are stuck. And no progress has been made. Excellent. That seems more like it. Now let's see if we can pry. They aren't technically compressed all the way. So we can try bottoming them out. That seems like a bad idea. Let's see if we can get this one. Oh, that did move. This made it more difficult to access, but it has moved, which implies that it's not so frozen that it would be impossible to get it to move. back together. We'll do some from the back as well. Bolts back in. oil your and air again nope. and frying it's gonna be more of an air and heat contact take the rubber off that clamp so it doesn't Nothing. Or heat. I cannot believe that. Sit and take a stink on that. Okay, one more chance at this. Turn this up to 120 pounds. Pressure. Why don't we just turn it up a little bit more? the 
ever faithful hammer. Well, I'm out of ideas for that. Alright, I had a bit of a think, and that's what I've come up with, which is a fitting, this is a fitting for the uh, air gun, the blower, and that's the bleeder valve off the other brake. So I'll put this bleeder valve in, but not cranked all the way down so I can still get air to pass through, and then I'm going to have to block off this port uh, for the brake line. <clears throat> But that should let me uh, have this sit with pressure on it while I give it some taps with a hammer and hopefully that gets things to cooperate. That'll just uh, thread into the end of the blowgun. No it won't. That's uh, a different thread. I need the adapter for that. Okay, so change the plan a bit. We're going to put the regular bleeder screw all the way in, but I've got... Uh, uh, piece of brake line in here that I just flared uh, set up on the inlet and I'll connect that to the airline and hopefully that will give me a good enough seal that I can leave it under pressure without having to uh, so that I can get in there and tab it with the hammer at the same time so as you can see that just threads on to the end of the air gun I thought that might happen. Just keeps trying to slip off that line. Don't have any hose clamps that small. Zip ties not destroy it. Uh. I think that's doing more. The way this is gonna go. So I'm gonna have to keep taking this out, taking the caliper apart, pressing these pistons back in, then pushing them back out with air and hopefully get them freed up enough that they'll move more than a sixteenth of an inch because they're not moving a whole lot, but they are moving, so that's progress. Do it again. See if I can get this pop back in. Screw clamp. Still, no. Maybe with a tap. Tap, tap. Aha. Still doesn't want to move without a hammer. It's definitely getting easier. Might be able to get that. Take it apart. See if we can get in there and turn that. So this is the one that's freed up. Still. That is so tight. Woo doggy. That is coming out. You can see. I think you can. You can see how much further that came out. Whoo yeah! As you can see, we got that one quite a ways out, so I think we can manage to get that one out. Now we'll work on this other one, which is barely moving. But it is moving. Ok, 
Okay, so the only acting force should be on that stuff. Try and turn it again. Place your bets. Oh, still nothing. Yeah, let's do it again. Damn. What we're going to try to do is push that just a little bit back in and maybe get it into a zone where you can still uh, get a little wiggle out of it. <laughs> that edge is getting pretty beat up. It's not going to take a lot more of that. It's in a little too far. Maybe. Get it to come up a little bit. Kind of a good sign. Woo! That's what we like to see. So I'm slowly pulling up as I'm rotating, and I've brought that up quite a ways. I think we may be able to get it. I think we're going to need to take it out mostly like this, not with air pressure. Still be careful to keep those pliers away from the surface that's going to have any interacting with the seal, because that would be a death sentence. Woo. Woo. There it is, in all its glory. Woo, baby. Alright, so we'll stick that back in a little bit. We'll try to drive the other one out there. Then we're ready to start doing a little little refinishing. For a minute there, I wasn't quite sure I was going to get that. That's why you don't do that. <laughs> Should have had something in there to catch it before it came all the way out. I'll keep you on your toes. Alright, so now it's cleanup time. 